Okay, so now that we've got all the models into Blender and um, yeah, so I think now we can start to edit the model. So for this you're gonna need um, you're gonna need to press N on your keyboard while hovering your mouse on this window. Then uh, scroll down, select background images. Now this is just one method um, inspired by one of the fellow modders on the community website Soccer Gaming. Uh, named The Evo. You can check him out. I'll leave a link to his user profile in the description. So, um, this is something that he taught us. New folder. Go and select your front. Image. I've named it front so it's easily visible. So, this will load your uh, reference image in the background. So, I make that front instead. So, it loads over the face. And uh, now you'll have to play around with these settings. It'll be different for every image. So, um, and have to place it such that it covers uh, normally what I do is I like to make it sure that it actually the mouth line is um, the closest to the model's mouth line as well so go to, to one go to two I think that should be fine should keep playing around may take a while I think this should be fine it's um, pretty close to what I want so yeah, remember that if you actually move the mouse around you lose you will only be available in one of these that's left right back front bottom and top so you want it to be in the front view actually better to hide the eye model so you just have the head model visible now if you want you can actually press N get rid of that for a while go to sculpt mode so you can see that there's this Press F on your keyboard that opens up the resize. So just move your mouse to the right or the left, preferably right because you want a bigger one. Press G on your keyboard so that switches this here to ground. You've got a multiple uh, selections here, so I just choose grab using um, the hotkey G. The other one you can be using is S to uh, soften and uh, I to inflate. These are the only ones that I mostly use. So now currently in G, now I can see that this is the model. So what I do is I move the model to match the picture's positions. So if I want to move the ear, I actually zoom out. I prefer zooming out when I have to uh, move a lot of the vertices or the vertices or how we're going to pronounce it really. Um, so yeah, you just move it around. I'm not going to be showing in too much detail since I've already done this part and you'll see my refined um, uh, results in a while. Move the model around such that it matches the picture behind. Also note that if you try to move the model when you've selected a, a really bad baseball, it could mess up things really bad. So you need to be very careful. You need to have the eye to see which base mode to select and uh, that can only be done by knowing how the player looks and how your supposed base model looks. It comes with experience I guess. Uh, sometimes people actually pick really good models but as for some players it's going to be really easy, for some it's going to be really hard and it takes really long to actually decide who to take. Sometimes you have to uh, create the face multiple times. Um, so, and all you're doing here is really just aligning everything accordingly to make sure everything is in, in line with the, the model that you can see behind this picture, behind uh, the eyelids. All the areas, the main areas, will be mapped, so you just push those around. If you feel like any area needs to be smoothened out, you just press S, so change this there, and just get smoothed out. So that is if you need it. And uh, so, yeah. So that's kind of done. We need the mouth as well. So we need the mouth according to the mouth line. You may have to make it a bit wider depending on the player you're using. And once that's pretty much done, of course, you need to fix up the eye model. So for the eye model, you click edit mode, right click on any one of the vertices, make sure you don't move it around too much. Press control and then your uh, right mouse, your left mouse button, and drag it around to draw a circle. Use these arrows to actually drag uh, the eye model of the of his right eye up or down. 
press S on the keyboard if you want to resize it. As you can see, there's a bit of the head model which I don't really want. Uh, so you can just pull that out. You may have to switch views for this, but that's fine. You can always switch back to the front view. And once you're done, that should be fine. Now you have the second eye model, so you right click here, so it deselects the other eye model and it lets you select this one. Move it around again, resize it, as you can see it does require resizing. Move around the uh, vertices of the head model such that it doesn't cover up the eye model. You may need to come into this view sometimes, so we do that every now and then. As you can see the head model is changing according to what you uh, do with the picture in front of it. So uh, once you're done, I'm going to show you how to actually map it. So um, I think I'll just um, switch to the result that I've got. So you may need to edit the profile as well, so you can use multiple pictures. Uh, as reference, keep looking at them, see what you need to change, maybe you make the nose a bit, the nose a bit bigger, or the lips inside, the chin, the downward, pointy, whatever it is that you want to change, the shape of the ears, size of the head model, size of the neck, all these details that you would have to look into. And um, yeah, so once you're done with the final head model, make sure of course that the front of his uh, head model does not get changed, that is, this needs to be in line with everything. I'll show you my results in a second. A few moments later. So I have finished my model and um, you can see here is the result. So we can now map the model. By mapping I mean that is to start creating the texture. The photo that we used, we can uh, use to actually map it onto this model. So what you do for that is you go to this part here. You go and uh, make sure you select the head model. You go here and on UV maps you add a new UV map, go into the textures tab, create a new texture layer so that the other ones are not affected, select image on movie, go into the folder that you have the picture and select the picture, go down, select coordinates as UV coordinates and the map as the new map that you just created. It's going to look distorted here, go into edit mode, and unhide the eyes if you want. And uh, what you do here is uh, you select your front. Okay, so now you see here is your model, here is the image you have selected. In with your mouse in this window, press U and you'll get this uh, menu. Select project from view. Okay, so you'll see this model uh, reflected onto this panel here. Now, with your mouse here, press S on your keyboard and scale it like this. So, you don't need to hold S, by the way, you just need to press it and then move your mouse outwards to scale uh, to a larger uh, dimension and inward to make it smaller. Press G on your keyboard and then move around your mouse to get it onto that. So, you can see as and when you're moving here, it reflects. Uh, what it looks like in this position as well. Press S on the keyboard again to get the final result of uh, how you want it to look. And um, yes, I think after a few movements here and there, maybe bring back the eye model just to make sure. Yes, I need a little bit of tweaking. Maybe make it small. And once you're done fixing up the correct position that you'd like for the head model, for the, for the, the texture, that is, the picture, I think you should be able to see it like this. So you actually mapped it now. You've mapped a 2D photo onto a 3D model essentially. Now it's time to map this texture. Unhide the eye model. Select the head model, select map 0 which is the original one and uh, this is actually a mapped version of it. So you just select uh, the head underscore cm. Okay, it should be in DDS format if I'm not wrong, uh, it should be this one. Um, it doesn't matter, I'm just saying that we, it, it won't be shown as head cm PNG, you'll just have this one here. It's just because of our restart editing, so it shows all the textures. Select texture paint, now in tools. Select 
clone, make sure these are the settings. Then go into options, make oh, 90, select stencil, select this option for invert, click clone from UV map and make bleed zero. It should be in two or something like that in the beginning. Make it zero for dragging it and moving it to the left. And once that's done, you just go here and click. And you see here that it's mounted onto this part of your texture. You can see it maps all over the place. So just do that. Uh, you'll notice the nose hasn't been mapped properly, so actually this is something we want to show. So I'm just going to show that again. Going back into UV map, okay, uh, redirect yourself to the. Just move into the part where it's the, the nose. You'll see a few belt are out of, out of position. So just right click and move them manually. And uh, just keep doing this until the nose has been not proper. You'll have to see which are the correct ones. And I think uh, this one's done fine for this one. It's done properly, so I'm gonna do it a bit better. I think it should be fine. And uh, that's somewhat fun, I guess I've done it better in the actual thing that I've done. It looks a bit weird here now, right now. Once you're done, you just uh, go back with your final result and start mapping it. So that's, uh, let's just see if it works. As you can see, it's mapped it again. So just keep clicking, clicking, and clicking. And sometimes what I've noticed is that uh, Blender doesn't actually map it. Uh, when you've go, gone into a different setting and then you're coming back. So all you have to do is actually just go back to map 0 here, uncheck clone for new map and then check it again and go back to the new map. It just refreshes the settings and starts mapping again. It didn't happen this time but it sometimes does happen in between. So you can just do that to actually fix it. Once you're done mapping the whole thing, just click on image, save as image, go into the folder that you're looking for, and I usually save them in this format, new text one, new text two, depending on how many maps I'm making. So I'll just save this as say new text tutorial. Make sure you're saving it as a PNG or a BMP, preferably, not as a DDS for now. Save as image. And uh, yeah, that is it for the texture. So you've now mapped the texture. Now I'm gonna open up my results, of course, so I'll open up this. And uh, this was my result in the texture. You can see a few cracks here and there that I need to remove. And I open up the base check texture that I have. So I have this as my base texture. I add it to the bit. Just to uh, copy this over to the other layer. Use your eraser. Set it to about 200. Which should be fine and then start erasing the sides because the sides as you can see are stretched which uh, doesn't give that natural feel and uh, you can keep doing this multiple times so for now we can just remove the, the part below the neck so just to make it neat for now and here we go you can see that it's becoming a lot neater because we get rid of all the, the stretched edges on the face Make sure that there's no remnant edges anywhere else. And I think that should be fine. Next, what you will want to do is uh, get rid of these things. Now, certain models are going to have this issue there. So, what you want to do is either, if you, if you rub them now, it's going to look bad. So, what you want to do essentially is uh, just clone these portions to the bottom part as well. It may take a while, but uh, well, for good results, you need the best. Um, well, you need to put in a lot of work to do that. So, and uh, yeah, that's done with the eyes. The next, you can see that the nose as well needs a bit of tweaking. So 
So you just make it nice and smooth here. You may want to make it darker by painting it over, but uh, that's entirely up to you. I generally don't do that unless it's uh, the photo that I'm using is uh, it, it doesn't look good or anything like that. So uh, I think here I'm just going to use the cloth because you know, I can choose one. Yes, I think that, that should be that for the first part of the texture. You may want to decrease uh, the brightness, increase saturation, things like that. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to make it to plus 5. Maybe increase the brightness. So that should be fine. Uh, sometimes you may want to actually uh, erase even more of the texture, but I would recommend it if it's actually a good enough texture. You may want to do it though, and uh, just to get it a little bit. It depends entirely on the texture. Sometimes you may want to do this. So yeah, this is just to get a bit more detail from the original texture back onto your texture. So once that's done, I just save that as uh, text one. That's the first trial of the texture. Check how it looks. You can just hide that for now. And select text one. So now you can see that a clear version of your texture is visible. Select the scroll one. And uh, yeah, I think this looks pretty nice. You can see it's a really good result actually. You may want to reposition the eyes. So, yeah, there you go. That's a really nice texture if you've got anything so does the eye rate you. Uh, you may want to map the ears as well, but for that you need a better picture. I haven't got one at the moment, but I will be doing that in the future. It's the same procedure, you just align it according to the ears so that the ear part of the texture looks good. And uh, yeah, there's nothing much different to it actually. So I think that's all there is to the texture. The rest of it really depends on you and how much more you want to refine it. I will be refining it now, but I won't be showing too much of the tutorial. It's just more Photoshop and uh, things like that. As you can see, I'm just editing the model some more. But uh, yeah, I'll get back to the next part of the tutorial, which will be uh, to edit the, I think, the hair model that will be the next part of the tutorial.